Hi guys, this week we're going to talk a little bit about ocean resources and how humans are affecting the oceans. The first thing we're going to talk about is the deep ocean. So last time we talked a little bit about how the deep ocean is still very unexplored because of the depth and the temperature and the pressure. So what we have is some new technology that scientists have discovered called submersibles. And submersibles are able to go to depths where humans aren't able to be. They're basically robots. Um, really high tech, really awesome. They can take temperature samples, um, data samples, organism samples, photographs that humans can't get otherwise, and also sonar, which is a sound um, tool that can measure what is happening in the ocean. They can measure distance using sound and also detect living things. This stuff is great, but also really high cost. And so a lot of scientists aren't able to use it yet because it's so expensive. This is a really cool way that scientists can explore the ocean on the surface. This is a giant buoy and it's called a drifter. It's awesome because it can follow the current. And it has all these things. It has GPS, um, it has a light monitor, it has a weather station, it has so many awesome things, and it's also solar powered, which is pretty amazing. So it does have a battery, but the solar power is, is powering the battery. So pretty sweet. It doesn't have to be recharged. What these drifters are doing is creating these sort of maps where each color is a different drifter. This is a lime green drifter, and it's allowing scientists to better understand how ocean currents work on the surface. And so for things like the garbage patch that's in the Pacific, if scientists understand the way the currents are working, they'll be better at understanding how to fix those problems like the garbage patch. Okay, let's talk about some things that the ocean gives to humans. So, of course, the ocean is really important because it gives us great opportunities for food. Um, seafood is a really important food source for a lot of parts of the world, especially um, near coastlines. What the ocean has is these things called fisheries, which are areas of the ocean where humans are allowed to fish heavily in those areas. Um, they provide about 16% of the world's protein. The ocean also has great resources for food that are in plants, such as algae and kelp. And these things are actually used to make foods that you eat all the time, like cheese, ice cream, toothpaste, which is not a food, but it's very important. Um, also pesticides and shaving cream. So these are things that you are using every day and you don't even know that they come from the ocean. The ocean also has amazing resources that humans use that come from non-living things. And this includes um, the energy that humans can harness from the wind and the waves, as well as a lot of different minerals, including things like gold, iron, which is used in a lot of building materials. And in the deep ocean, there even are diamonds, which is pretty amazing. Right now, the cost of extracting these things from the ocean is too high, and so it's not happening a whole lot, but what is being extracted is a lot of oil. This is an oil rig. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the oil that we use actually comes from ocean sources. This is an oil rig, which is being used to suck the oil out from Earth's crust and harness it for human use. And of course, humans use the ocean for tourism. Tourism is the fastest growing division of the world economy and is responsible for over 200 million jobs around the world. And the ocean is a place where a lot of that happens. People love to go to the beach. So this is leading to jobs, but also entertainment for a lot of people. Of course, when we're getting all these awesome things from the ocean, we are also having an effect on it. And sometimes that's a very negative effect. So, as I said before, we're getting this oil source from the ocean. Sometimes that results in oil spills. And oil is really, really dangerous to living things. It kills them, it suffocates them, and it leads to a lot of death and destruction and pollution. When we do a lot of fishing, there's something called bycatch, which means that 
the fishermen catch things in their nets that aren't what they're going to be used, what they're going to be using for selling and for food. Um, and this can kill fish faster than they actually reproduce. It also sometimes will catch endangered species and it's often too late to save them and so they're killed by getting caught in this net. This happens to dolphins and sea turtles and sharks. Um, and so this is having a negative effect on ecosystems and fisheries. What happens is that new nets are reducing bycatch by a lot, but even with the best nets, fishermen are still throwing away about 30% of what they catch, which is a lot. Similar to that issue, um, overfishing is hurting fish populations a lot. Um, what you can see here is that today the fish is much smaller and is not reproducing as much as it was before. That's because we aren't letting fish grow up um, to reproductive age and so that perpetuates the problem of overfishing because if there's more fish you have to catch more of them to feed the same amount of people. This is showing dredging which is actually a really hot topic in North Carolina right now. Um, dredging is when a machine attached to a ship pulls sand up from the ocean floor and either moves it or takes it to a beach to build up the beaches because a lot of them are being eroded. And what happens is this pulls up sediment and organisms that are on the floor, which displaces things that live in the benthic zone, but also creates this big cloud of sediment that blocks sunlight for ocean plants and plankton. Um, and it can also introduce these heavy metals into the ocean food chain, which are really dangerous. And then a huge, huge issue, of course, is ocean pollution. Um, it's a global problem. If one ocean is polluted, they all are, because remember we talked about how they are connected. And these are things like solid waste, plastic bottles, chemicals, waste, sewage, um, dead animals. Most of the pollution is runoff from land, as you can see in this image. Um, so this is telling you Every year, 8 million metric tons of plastic goes into the ocean, which is contributing to the huge plastic island that we talked about in class. Um, there are laws that are in place that are trying to manage pollution laws, and a great um, program called the Ocean Cleanup Project, which you should check out. Um, there's a, a young scientist who's attempting to create basically a giant vacuum cleaner for the ocean, which is a pretty cool idea. So at the end of the day, the ocean is giving us so many great resources and opportunities, and we are not doing our part to keep it safe. So make sure that you are doing your part to save the ocean and keep it protected from pollution and other big issues. Have a great week, bye.